Hi, my name is Miloš and welcome to Element 14 Presents. Today I will be covering a project about model rocketry. It's a hobby I wanted to get into for a while. I want to test stuff like flight computers, thrust factoring, but today I will be making a wireless rocket launcher. Before I begin going into the details about the project, here's a quick sketch to give you an overview of what I want to do in this project. Make a guess to what's my favorite TV show growing up, based on the sketch. Okay, now I'll try to cover all of the things that we will need for this project. First, we will need a terminal that we will use to control the rocket itself. You can see the components that we will need on the terminal, like the fire button, the LCD. Besides that, we will also need the rocket launcher module, that's the module that's actually connected to the rocket. The communication between them is LoRa, and it's a pretty good and easy to use communication with a really good range. And when we press the fire button, we send a signal and the rocket flies off. Now that you've seen my project, how do we actually launch a model rocket? Well, we first need a rocket motor and here is one here. Uh, it's an half an A motor and it's small as they get. To launch it, we need an igniter and that's something like this. It's literally a piece of resistive wire connected to just wa normal wires that we need to connect to a battery or some other power source. The thing is, for this to work, it needs more than 12 volts, let's say, or around 12 volts. To light something like this, you would usually use something like a LiPo cell, for example, but I really want to go uh, a different route and not use LiPo cells. I want the whole system to be powered by a 9 volt battery, but still be able to actually launch this uh, rocket. To do that, I went with this. These are uh, called supercapacitors. I tried using them in parallel to see if 9 volts would be sufficient because they can supply a lot of current, but that didn't work with the, this igniter. But having them in series worked uh, perfectly, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now, uh, the problem is that uh, we need to keep these supercapacitors at uh, voltage under the rated volt voltage of 8.1 volts, so we'll need a circuit for that. And here's how that circuit looks. First, we have the power source, the current limiting resistor for charging, and the two supercaps. So, we need to limit the current so we don't stress out the 9 volt battery too much. To balance the supercapacitors while charging, we need a resistor and a MOSFET to uh, try and discharge it a bit and to let the current flow through the resistor rather than charge up the capacitor more. To control the MOSFET, uh, we're gonna use an op-amp on both of the MOSFETs and on the lower stage that's not an issue. But on the upper stage we need a differential amplifier because the lower point isn't ground but it's actually the voltage of the lower capacitor. So this is the, how the final circuit works and we set the voltage with a potentiometer. Okay, so here are the supercapacitors that I just drew, and these are the components for keeping them balanced. As you can see, we have this op-amp and this op-amp, which actually do uh, most of the work when it comes to controlling the MOSFETs. But, as I mentioned before, we need the differential amplifier to actually control that op-amp. And they are connected to this here potentiometer, which is set to around 7.9 volts. The system actually works using three relays. One relay is the charge relay, which actually just connects the power to the charging resistor and charges the capacitors like that. We have a discharge relay, which connects to a smaller, even smaller resistor to quickly discharge the capacitors in case of an emergency. And we have the fire relay, which actually connects the igniter to our super cap bank once it is charged. And because the relays are at uh, the 5 volt logic and we have an Arduino maker when 1300, which is at 3.3 volt logic, we need a level shifter, which is this thing here. So that would be it for the schematic. Besides that, we have different voltage levels that we will need and LEDs and stuff like that. After drawing the circuit, I connected everything on a breadboard just to make sure everything works. These are the two supercapacitors that I want to balance. These are the balancing resistors and the balancing MOSFETs. This is the potentiometer we use for setting the voltage. At, we want, at which we want to charge the supercapacitors. They're rated at 8.1 volts, so I set the voltage at around 7.9, just to be safe. And this chip here and this chip here are the op-amps. 
Also, we have the power resistor right here, which is used for limiting the charging current. And these two multimeters are just checking the voltage of both of these super caps. There's some voltage left on them, but they're pretty much empty. So let's see what happens when we turn on the power supply. You can see the voltages are uh, starting to increase pretty rapidly, but they're going to stop at 7.9, 7.92 volts. And they're going to stay there, which is uh, what we wanted to do with this circuit. Uh, at this moment, the circuit is drawing around 300 milliamps, which is the current that's going through the uh, balancing resistor, so the caps don't overcharge. But also, if you disconnect the power resistor, uh, we can see that there's some leakage current and that they're going to slowly discharge. Uh, this would have been done by the relay when we, discon uh, when we disconnected the charge resistor. And the voltage will drop down slowly, but we don't care since as soon as we get the supercapacitors to the voltage that we want, we can press the button and launch the rocket. Okay, let's take a look at the physical parts for the rocket launcher module. Let's start first with the box that I will be using for this project. And uh, first of all, what are all of the connections and switches that we will need for this? Uh, first of all, we'll need the power switch. I'll do that with this key actuated switch. Uh, I want to add an external USB so I can easily reprogram the board without actually needing to take out the Arduino. I want a buzzer. I want some LEDs that I'll add on top later and I want to add two of these uh, GX16 connectors. One will be for triggering the rocket itself and the other one will be for sending out the signal and having I2C data if I want to add some other data logging capabilities down the line. Uh, you may notice the holes that are drilled uh, here on the box, that's from an uh, older project, but they will work in favor for us. Uh, I 3D printed some mounts for all of these. As you can see, for example, for the buzzer, it just fits right in like this. And we can easily mount it like this here with four M3 screws. Uh, it's the same case for the GX connectors, for example, as you can see here or for the key switch here. Also, and there's one for the Ethernet, but the tolerance here is really tight, so I'll need to widen the, this hole a bit and slowly tap it in with a hand. Okay, now that all of the soldering is complete, it's time to somehow place this thing in the box. Just so you see the back side of the board too, there's a lot of wires. Here I had to add the additional stuff, so the charging and discharging resistor. But it turned out that during testing that this resistor was too small and the battery was too weak for it to charge the super cap, so I had to add this resistor bank like this. It's 10 2K resistors in parallel. So we'll put that here and it's time to somehow place this board here between all of these wires. So let's get started with that. As you saw by the sped up clip that kind of took a while because the screws are kind of inaccessible because of all the wires, but I managed in the end. Now it's time to plug all of the things in. Okay, so now that we're done, the only thing is left is to see if it will actually turn on. We see power, all we need is the Arduino blinking LED and that's it. We've assembled it correctly. 
If I knew how much soldering that this would take, I would have probably went out and just designed a custom PCB for it and not spend hours and hours on soldering it, but I'm just glad it's working now. So with that part of the project done, there's another thing left and that's to make the terminal that you saw in the drawing in the beginning. So this is the case I will be using for it. So let's get to the panel that will be inside this case and see all of the things that we need, like the switches, LEDs, the LCD and so on. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community, where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! Okay, so for the rocket launcher terminal that uh, you've just seen the case, uh, we need a, to cut out a panel to which we can mount all of the buttons, switches, LCD and stuff like that. This is the piece I cut out. It's a piece of sheet plastic and it will work fine, but anything like a piece of plywood or anything else you can find will do just fine. To cut out this shape, I actually used the foam that came in the case and just traced the outline and cut it out. Now let's look at all of the things that we need on this plate. We're gonna need the display, of course. Uh, we're gonna need the power on off switch, which is the key toggle switch. We're gonna put it here. I want to add a USB port so I can easily program, reprogram the Arduino without having to take everything out. Let's put it also up there. We're gonna need two toggle switches. These are the covers for them. Uh, I have, because they're easier to place like this for now. We're gonna need LEDs. We're gonna use eight LEDs in total. Two LEDs will be used for this toggle switch. Here are some mounts I printed for them. Uh, these are places for labels and these are places for the LEDs. Uh, here we will have charge and discharge LED. Here we will have two, another two LEDs, one for arm and one for fire. And here we will have four more LEDs. If it's on, if the whole system is on, an alarm LED and the heartbeat LEDs for both Arduinos. We're also gonna need a mount for the buzzer. We're also, uh, besides that, we're gonna need two more things. The knob for the potentiometer and the big fire button. This is a fully 3D printed uh, fire button and you'll be able to find all of the files down below. Now that you've seen the panel and all of the things on it, it's time to wire it up. But it's a simple wire job, so no special electronics. We just need to connect everything to all of the Arduino pins. But there's one other thing we need to cover, and that's software for both the terminal module and the rocket launcher module. So let's look at the software for the terminal first. Okay, so now we can look at the software for the terminal first. First, we have all of the pins that we will be using on the Arduino. These are mostly for the LEDs, for the encoder and for the switches and buttons. We have a hard rate LED and a hard rate LED from the rocket launcher. A hard rate LED is an LED that goes off each second, which indicates if the program is still running on or not. And in the case of the rocket launcher LED, it will show us if the program is running on the other Arduino and if we have a stable connection over LoRa, so we know if there's some issue with the system. Besides that, here are some ca custom characters that we need. Uh, for the most part, this code takes the inputs from the switches and the buttons, uses the LCD interface and just sends uh, commands to the uh, rocket launcher module. Uh, the way we send messages is, while this is not optimal, I found, find that it works pretty good, is using a string and just having separators between the actual values that we want and that's how we get the data out of the messages. And in the end we just check all of the switches and buttons and depending on if something new happened, uh, we send a new message to the rocket launch. And this below is just the dev mode as I call it. It's just a flag that I change from true to false, depending on if I want more output on the serial monitor when I'm debugging the program. Okay, now we have the code for the rocket launch. It's much more simple than the code for the terminal, which was already simple. So the whole, the whole idea of this code is to just control some LEDs and relays based on the 
input from the uh, terminal that's coming over lore. So we have the LED that uh, we were talking about on the terminal and that and that LED is also present on the rocket launcher so we can look from afar and see if it's turning on or not. We also have the danger LED which we turn on when the voltage goes above 14 volts let's say and also have a buzzer to indicate that it's a dangerous situation for anyone to come close to when that voltage increases at that moment. Besides that, there's nothing else to this code, it's just controlling a few LEDs and relays. We've covered electronics, software, soldering, stuff like that already, but there's one more important topic that we need to cover and that's 3D printing. You've seen 3D printing through this video already, through the connector mounts, through the buzzer mounts, stuff like that, but there are two much more important things that we need to print and those are the rocket parts. Here you can see the fin assembly that I designed and printed on my 3D printer and also we need to print out the rocket launch ramp. So I'll cover them now so you have all of the things that you need to follow this project along. Let's start with the rocket stand. So the rocket stand essentially is an aluminium 6mm rod which is used as a guide rail for the rocket so it gets a proper course in the beginning. Besides that we have the three collapsible legs and we have a launch plate which is here just to protect the plastic parts from melting during liftoff. So if we remove the launch plate and its mount you can see how this mechanism works. It's toolless installation and if this is the launch rod and if you remove the rod adapter you can see that there's a thread cut here with a cone shape so as we tighten the rod adapter you, it holds the legs in place and we have a stable tripod. Besides that we also have the rocket itself. The orange thing is the rocket tube and that's off the shelf. The black parts though are uh, designed by me and 3D printed. I had uh, all of the components in the kit but it required precisely gluing the fins and things like that so I decided to just model it and 3D print it because it was easier and I knew that the angles would be good. So we have the nose cone, we have the guide rings to guide the rocket on the rail and we also have the fin assembly which also works as the motor mount. And the project is finally complete, as you can see by the modules behind me. I've turned them on to prepare them for you, so you can see that this LED is blinking and also this one, which means that both of them are on. You can see the LCD and the menu on it. So let's click connect and connect the modules together. So it says connected and now when you look, you can see that both LEDs are actually turning on and off, which means that they have an active communication between them. Now, if we flip the charge switch, for example, you will see the charge LED turning on, or if we turn on the discharge switch, you will see that we have the discharge switch turning on. We also have the danger LED, which only turns on when the voltage gets above 14 volts. Besides them, we also have the rocket. It's not fully 3D printed. This is an off-the-shelf component. But it can also be 3D printed if you use, for example, vase mode or something like that. But the fin assembly, the guiding rings and the uh, tip of the rocket, I designed them and 3D printed them out of PLA. So the only thing left to do is to launch this. So let's do that now. Okay, so I've kind of prepared the setup for the launch. Supercapacitors are currently charging and, and are at 10 volts. As you can see, I'm holding the terminal and we are waiting for it to reach 16 volts and then we can press fire. Charging is complete. I'm arming the system and launching the rocket in 3, 2, 1. And we have liftoff. It wasn't a completely successful flight because, as you saw, the parachute didn't open and the rocket just fell. But still, we launched the rocket in the air, which is the most important thing because that means that all of our electronics worked. I'm really happy with how it all turned out, especially the rugged case and the look with all of the covered switches, the big fire button, the LEDs, and the little module working with the super cap circuit, which I was doubtful I was going to be able to pack into this little box here. 
If you have any comments, suggestions, or any other ideas that I could do when it comes to model rocketry next, please leave them at Element 14 community. Until then, see you next time. Bye!